Hi, I'm Drew, and that's Bethany. And today we're in the heart of downtown Los Angeles to check out an old bank vault. But this bank vault no longer holds stacks of cash. Instead, these days it holds stacks of books. This hidden bookstore has a layout unlike anything you've ever seen before. It even has its own labyrinth. If you don't believe us, come see for yourself. Today, the one and only, but certainly not the last, The Lost Bookstore, here on Odyssey Odyssey. Oh, hey, coupons. Well, today we're on the Metro Red Line, headed downtown. The Purple Line will get you there, too. Parking downtown can be somewhat difficult, so we just thought we'd leave the cars at home today. Where do we get off at? That's an excellent question. We'll hop off at the Pershing Square Station. From there, it's only a two-block walk southeast on 5th Street to the corner of 5th and Spring. The last bookstore is located right on the corner. This building used to be the Los Angeles headquarters for Crocker Citizens National Bank. By the 1920s, Spring Street was known as the Wall Street of the West. But by the 1960s, most of the banks and financial institutions around here moved to the west end of downtown. But these vaults would not stay empty for long. So what took the place of all those stacks of cash in those empty vaults? Something you least suspect. Books. Books. Let's go see. Here we are. Today we are here with manager and resident expert of The Lost Bookstore, Katie Orphan. Katie, thank you for being here with us today. My pleasure. All right, so I've only ever seen The Lost Bookstore in pictures online. Mm -hmm. So what are we about to see today? Uh, well, you're about to see what I think is the most beautiful bookstore in Los Angeles. We're in a renovated bank building from the early 20th century that we've turned into a wonderland of books and records and art. So it's all sorts of wonderful things. Who came up with this idea? Uh, that'd be the store owner, Josh Spencer. He wanted a space that brought together a lot of the things he loved. So he opened our original location, which was much smaller. And then a year and a half later, we moved over here to the space that most people are familiar with. So with all these different sections, there's a lot to explore. So is it okay if we go check some out? Of course, let's go. Okay, so what's this upstairs section called? So this whole floor is called the labyrinth. These shelves are all kind of designed to give the feel of being in a labyrinth or being in a maze. And this room that we're in used to all be $1 books, but all of the sections downstairs were running out of space. So right. over the last few months, we've been sort of refilling everything up here and it's been great to have so much stuff that had been in our warehouse finally see the light of the store shelves. Right, exactly. And then do you, do you still have a section that is a $1 section? We it's do. It's just a smaller part now. Yeah, it's a smaller part. And some of the features that people loved about the dollar room, like a lot of the decorative stuff, um, the section of books uh, organized by color, a lot of that we did keep. Uh, you can see right oh, over there here. It is. <laughs> this section is best for people who are doing art projects or interior design work and they want a certain set of colors. Or if you just remember that a book had a blue cover, you don't remember what it was about, you don't remember who wrote it, this is probably your best there bet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a book with a blue cover. Okay, this is interesting. <laughs> this is a tunnel of uh, books. Yes, that that is exactly <laughs> what it is. So how did this come to be? Uh, it's, it's again a brainchild of the store owner, Josh. He had this sort of visual idea. He wanted people to pass through a tunnel of books, so we made this happen. And we had this ramp and the railing was already part of the space. Uh -huh. So it seemed like the natural fit to put the tunnel here. What happens if like a customer wants to buy like this <sighs> book, for example? Well, well, they can't. Uh, <laughs> mostly because they all have holes drilled through them for the rebar oh, okay. <laughs> that makes They're the tunnel secure. Yes. Wow. So there's rebar arches through so. here. So everything is secure. If you see, you can see the rebar through there. Oh yeah. If you were able to get one of those books out, yeah. you'd be missing part of every page <laughs> in yeah. order to do it. 
What do we have over here? This looks like a, definitely a remnant of when this place was a, a bank. Yeah, it, it certainly is. This is one of several vaults in the building. This level is where the manager's office was and a lot of the sort of administration of the bank. Mm -hmm. And so this, I believe, was the cash vault that the managers had access to. Where all the stacks of cash were. Yes, giant stacks of cash. <laughs> Can we go inside? Of course. And so now there's more books in here. Yes. And what section is this? What are the books that we're keeping extra safe in the vault? <laughs> uh, our horror novels are here. Mm -hmm. Our true crime is here. Books on conspiracies and the paranormal, those all live in here. Okay. Uh, and we have some fun additional architectural features that yeah, have been what, added what is to. this? Uh, this is an art piece by one of the artists who has the gallery on the on the rest of the mezzanine, the Spring Arts okay. Collective. Jenna Preby built this for us to kind of look like a sci-fi, steampunk, Jules Verne control yeah, panel. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a futuristic radio or something, but like 1960s futuristic. Yeah. I love that. Let's head out of here before we get locked in. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> We are in, I believe, your favorite section. Yes, indeed. It's the kids section. Yeah. Right? Kids and young adults. Now, I happen to find my favorite already, <laughs> Nancy Drew. Did you have any titles in here that kind of remind you of Ugh. your childhood and what pivoted the whole love of books? There, there are a lot of things. That's the fun of picking a lot of what we carry, mm. is that a lot of my favorite things are here. Behind us are a lot of our new releases, but a lot of those are things that I saw and was like, these are great. I can sell this to a kid. I can sell this to a parent or a grandparent, somebody who's looking for something specific and wonderful for a child. But yeah, exactly. this store is full of things that I love. <laughs> this is the vault on the ground floor, full of vintage books. I feel like I just went back in time. <laughs> yeah, I think this wow. is this is the part of the store that smells most like old books. We don't want things to go to waste, so this is a place for old encyclopedias or old time life sets or partial sets of the you know Harvard classics can come find a home. Awesome. Well, Katie, thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm gonna go now and do some shopping. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Well, that concludes our exploration of the, wait, where's Bethany? Oh, hey. Oh. Are we finished already? Yeah, are you gonna buy all those? Yeah, they're a good price. Seriously, guys, you need to come out here and see it for yourselves. As the Lost Bookstore states, what are you waiting for? We won't be here forever. Certainly not with you around. Uh, you know, we didn't drive here, right? So how are you gonna get Please those Please don't home? forget to like and subscribe in the link down below. Thanks for joining us for this season of Oddity Odysseys. We will see you again. Do you think it could carry one? They knew we were coming. Yeah, must be in the right they spot. They did that just for us. <laughs> oh, I need this. I'll just take this whole cart. Yeah, just, just roll it out the door.